There is a big scandal coming out of the NYPD this week. Now, getting a gun license in a big liberal city like New York is hard enough, but it turns out that when Lieutenant Paul Dean was on duty, you were almost guaranteed a license so long as you had enough money, booze, or prostitutes to offer. Three former NYPD officers and a former prosecutor were all arrested last week and charged in federal court in relation to a years-long investigation into gun licensing bribery. All four men were charged with conspiracy to commit bribery and several other crimes related to the scandal. The criminal complaint alleges that as far back as 2013, and in some cases even 2010, if you wanted a gun license, you could simply hire a special expediter who would get the department to process and approve the license application, sometimes in a matter of hours, in exchange for piles of guns, hookers, and money. Otherwise, the process could take months and up to even a full year. But on the NYPD website, it specifically tells people to avoid expediters because they can't actually get the job done and it's a fake service. Apparently not. Rough background with multiple violent arrest records? No problem! Dean and company gave licenses to people with prior weapons misdemeanors, domestic violence convictions, and felonies. And if for whatever reason a violent felon couldn't hire an expediter, all they had to do was get John Chambers, a former assistant DA, to throw the officers some free meals, a Rolex, or Super Bowl tickets. Boom. Done. There's your gun license. Several other cops and expediters were already swept up in the investigation, including a former neighborhood patrol leader turned gun broker, who then recorded his conversations with the cops in question to bring the whole thing crashing down. This guy, Alex Lichtenstein, recorded over 70,000 conversations involved in this scheme, most of which were with cops. That means that NYPD officers were actively engaged in corruption or at least planning this corruption up to 70,000 times. I don't need to tell you that that's not okay, right? Last November, Lichtenstein pled guilty to offering a cop six grand for a gun permit, despite the fact that he charged between 10 and 16 grand for his services. He told clients that he would help them navigate the licensing process, but really just bribed the department to make sure that all his clients passed the process with flying colors. It's estimated that in the last about three years, he made close to a quarter million dollars doing this. And one of the other guys involved in this was a former detective who decided to get an FFL and open up a gun shop. He opened up shop and guaranteed licenses to criminals, no matter their history, and would work the application straight up to Dean in exchange for free guns. Meanwhile, we have groups like Moms Demand Action running around and demanding harsher and harsher laws to punish law-abiding gun owners, and here's the NYPD mucking it up for the rest of us. Serve and protect. In less infuriating news, the Hearing Protection Act is still out in legislative limbo, but where there is a demand, the market will provide. New from Ruger is the silent SR integrally suppressed barrel. This little thing is actually pretty cool and is made to fit a 1022 takedown, the takedown light, or their 22 charger pistol. I actually have a 1022 takedown and I'd love to try out one of these things for shits and giggles, except I'm pretty sure it's illegal in Massachusetts. Just like everything else. And finally, Oklahoma is looking at a defensive display bill that would put brandishing a gun under the category of self-defense. Under current state law, self-defense guidelines basically require someone to pull a trigger in order to avoid a felony, which is really counterintuitive. The Oklahoma bill passed the state house by a pretty decent margin just last week. Representative Emily Virgin complained that people are, quote, more concerned about gun rights and the gun owner's rights than they are about the people who are experiencing violence at the hands of those gun owners. Oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't aware that law-abiding gun owners are just running around and spreading violence. So I guess what Representative Virgin is saying is she would rather that someone actually get shot rather than just freaked out at seeing a gun. Just wanted to clear that up. 
That is your Second Amendment and firearm related news for the week. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you're on YouTube or throw me some upvotes if you're over on VidMe. And if you really like my videos and want to help me spread the message of liberty and how cool the Second Amendment is, you can also help by supporting me on Patreon. Until next week, stay safe and happy shooting. Birds, that's our word, brought to you by Room for Freedom, uh, which is Ben Stone's new app, uh, which we talked about in length. Uh, if you haven't listened, heard about it, <laughs> check it out. It's hobosymbols.com. It's basically um, an Airbnb where you can kind of choose what kind of currency you want to pay, and there's no record keeping, so it's completely private, so there's nothing to subpoena. And I'm here with James Babb. By the way, I have a bunch of announcements. We just need to get them all out of the way. Um... So we're still doing the contest, the, um, the you know, make a funny com uh, make a funny review on our iTunes page. It's three stars or above, and you could win the um, the King of the Hill. That's you know, that's my purse. I don't know you flag uh, and uh, Gadsden flag um, that's been making their meme runs. I keep seeing it everywhere. And um, our co-host Jeremy just got out of jail this morning. <laughs> <laughs> no. And I think we should lead with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, have you heard about this? Have you got the full details of what's been going on with this? Or yes, I, I've been following it. But I, before we get into that, I have one question based on what you just started with, and uh, this contest sounds really interesting. So you 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 uh, leave a three star or better funny review, and you have a chance of winning what? What is it? Okay, so I have a whole bunch of stuff. I think there's like a Libertarians Against Humanity, which I guess is now okay. contraband. Um, Ooh. Yeah. Prizes. Yeah, some stickers and some buttons and some. I just put a bunch of stuff. I don't even remember what's in the bag now. Um, and then a. But what if I? What if you leave the funniest review that's only one star? Shouldn't you also win something? I mean, this seems like a little bit if, like if it's really good. Like, are we? Pay, are I'll you really going to pay people to live <laughs> leave good reviews? That's what it's all I about. Mean, it's about, about bribing. Okay, <laughs> but I guess if it's, it's really funny, if it's really funny, I'll allow it. <laughs> I think it. I think it could be maybe a special prize, but it should still be recognized. Okay. Per James Babb, we're changing the rules, <laughs> but we don't. Okay. But we don't encourage it. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get them reviews up. It's gonna. It better be a lot funnier if it's one star. Let's just say you're gonna. Yeah. Be, the the standards are gonna be a lot higher. Yeah. So. Um, I'm I'm not gonna. There was one comment that I would think would work as a one star, but I'm not gonna say it because I because I know Steve Miller Miller listens to this and he's gonna be the judge of all this, so he can't look okay. or read any all of right. these things. So. Uh, but think yeah. of him when you're when you're making your funny comment. Like, is this is this like is this Miller Miller dank? Mm -hmm. You know, like it better be, or you will be judged harshly. Yeah. So if you get some sumo action in there, I'm pretty sure he'll probably favor that one. So, yeah. All right. But and uh, yeah, the flag is the um, the Gadsden flag with Bobby Hill's face from King of the Hill, and <laughs> that's my purse. I don't know you. Um, you want to get that? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. The uh, the secretary will get that, or I don't know. Okay. Anyway, if it's if it doesn't stop ringing, I'll go unplug it. That's the <laughs> landline that like I don't even know is still connected, but I only knows who's calling it. Grandpa, what's anyway. a landline? <laughs> <laughs> well, Sonny, back in my day, there was wires connected to your phone. But uh, right. anyway, so our friend Jeremy, yeah, good news is released from jail. Bad news is he was arrested for menacing, <laughs> menacing. <laughs> Oh, menacing. We, we should give the backstory first because what happened was he posted this comment, or I guess it's, it's a status update or news feed, whatever, on Facebook. I don't understand the internet. Uh, he posted something on his Facebook, and he had like the, you know how you can do the the big text, and it has like the the colors all really bright, so it makes your thing almost look like a meme. Well, he did that, and. Um, it said uh, something along the lines of, well, actually, you know, I, I think I have it right here. Uh, Stuck in traffic for over an hour with no escape options, all because of some agent of the state died. Uh, and then he, oh, they didn't give the whole quote, but it said like he uh, went on to describe the, 
the firefighters as parasites and use profanity in the post. Oh, ah, oh, terrible. Anyways, um, and of course, I guess someone that he knew went on and like shared it and a bunch of cops and firefighters in New York uh, found out about it and they were passing it around and basically sending them death threats and all this other sort of nasty stuff. Uh, horrible. And I guess people have also been calling. They, they doxed him. They found out where he lived, what his business was, and they started calling his phone. Um, and going well, to his these house. People were, well, because, because he didn't show compassion. You yeah. see, he didn't show compassion, and therefore he needed to be killed for baby Jesus. Okay? <laughs> like, this is, for baby this is the logic for baby Trump. that, like, you did not respect some state employees Therefore, baby Jesus will cry if we don't come over to your house and 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 hit you with sticks. I mean, I, <laughs> this is the literally it is the mentality, but on a scale that I don't think anybody expected. I'm sure Jeremy was a little startled by the sudden engagement level of said post, oh which we got thousands and thousands of comments and hundreds and hundreds of shares and. Then it then and then it got to the to the news media and I and now it then it got then it I think it took a turn for the worst. Yeah. So what happened was I guess a reporter tried to try, knocked on his door and he wasn't in in the house. I guess he was in the garage. Um, there's not too much information, but there's little bits of information that I gathered on my own. Uh, Jeremy has said that he's not giving a. Any statement be, per his lawyer's request, uh, smart move. Uh, I was actually going to try to get him on, but he was like, yeah, my lawyer said it's a bad idea. And I was like, yeah, your lawyer is probably smarter than me. <laughs> we, we've totally all been there. Anyway. We've all been there. He's now moved into that phase of life where you answer <laughs> questions with my lawyer told me not to answer. You know? <laughs> yep. yep. So, um, all right. So uh, from what I gathered, the, the the reporter came onto his property and was asking him to comment on this, and he kept telling him no, and he finally got upset and pulled a knife. And remember, this, people have been coming to his house. You know, these people that are that are making death threats have been coming to his house and like trying to instigate fights and arguments with him. Um, and the threats are credible. Like when yes. you've got uh, so police says, officers so threatening violence against you, yeah, you know they have the weapons and they have the total total lack of any kind of accountability that might slow them down okay so this is a recipe for you know to to definitely be on edge definitely would make me like really paranoid or not paranoid because there are people out to get you but very concerned um anyway so um so the reporters get it and then what happened so the reporters get it and or uh, well they they they, they go uh, they go there and they, they kept pressing him and they pulled a knife on him and they they called the cops now, uh, like a newswoman and a and a TV camera. Yes, right. And, and so he's, it's he was, like a like a local network or something. Yeah, and they have. I don't think they've released a full unedited clip of the video, but mm -hmm. they they start it right when he's like, I he was like he was like he was like, please get off my property, and, and then he pulls a knife. And um, the the thing that I saw, which was kind of interesting, is if if you watch the video where they actually are handcuffing Jeremy, he said like, I told her to get off my property. So it seems like you. For me, I don't know if this is the case because I'm not speaking because he wouldn't he wouldn't even tell me what happened. Uh, <laughs> so Jeremy's very smart, and so is his lawyer. Um, he said, you know, it looked it looked like he was telling him like I was telling her to get off my property, and she wouldn't. You know, so that's what you know. He, considering all the threats that he had, it's kind of, you know, um, uh, a, a normal reaction, I guess. Uh, at least. For hey, yeah, I think they were like. I mean, I think they were the like he. At least one of the stories I read, or it was described as, uh, you know, he, he was like what, just ignoring the knock at the door, and they just kept knocking and banging, and finally saw him in the garage and started, you know, pounding on the garage door, and finally he had he was you know agitated and and opened the door, pointed the knife not like like towards them or even close to them in, in any way, just kind of held it up and pointed it at them, and you know said please leave my, you know my property and. Um, well, let's just say, you know, I don't know. We might want to talk to Jeremy about handling interviews. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's go back to some of the basics about you know doing good interviews. Yeah. You know, <laughs> if you if you're pulling a knife, uh, you know, on camera, 
that's probably that could be problematic. Yeah, but you know how the news media is. Like anytime there's someone who doesn't fit the the Democratic wing party of everything, they're going to paint them to look terrible. And that was the case. If you look at all of these 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 uh, news articles about it, he's like they're like he he said the f word when he called them parasites. Like, isn't he a horrible person? And here's where he works, and this is his his private business, and this is you know this is the area where he lives in, oh, and this yeah. is where his house. Come on. And I guess the um, the New York Police Department had contacted him and told him uh, that they're they're investigating a cr- uh, a credible threat that the NY police, uh, the NY um, fire department were going to were planning on setting his house on fire while his kids were inside. Well, they were saying stuff like that in the in these comments were yeah. just vicious. Yeah. They're like, when your children are burning, you'll then you're going to know that you should be nice. You know, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, here we are. We have anyway. And police officers what? were also involved in in the the death threats and too. Is like, so anybody who still believes in government, listen to this. Uh, if we need the police <laughs> to stop violence and the firefighters to stop fires, then how come they're threatening violence and cuss- starting fires for people with an opinion they don't like? It's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, it, it really, it really was extreme but it it sort of like became like a i don't know like a just a base feeding frenzy of where these people just reverted to their root programming from you know whatever fox news or getting hit in catholic school or whatever i don't know whatever (laughs) program them to like love authority like just kicks in and 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 sort of a weird tribal way i mean whoo yeah, but I'm, it makes me scared to go on the internet. It, it, it makes me scared to go on the internet because I feel like I'm one snarky comment away from a, a lynch mob at my door. Yeah. Right? Like, By the way, this did, is this is what can happen. Did we mention that you're not James Babb? You're definitely not him. I'm I'm definitely not Jim Jesus. We have commandeered the Alberts. <laughs> We're doing a show. For- Doing really good impressions of them. But the New York Police Department is also in a new scandal <laughs> today. I guess it's today? Uh, April 25th. No, so this is kind of old. Um, but I just learned about it today through a, a YouTube channel called, like, The Liberty Doll, I believe. I'll, I'll post a link to the uh, to the video. Uh, but this is from the CBS News. I guess a, a former New York police... Uh, New York City police lieutenant and two former police officers and a lawyer who once worked as a prosecutor are arrested in a federal gun licensing probe. Uh, so apparently what happened was uh, they traded speedy handling of gun permits for paid vacations, jewelry, catered parties, cash and visits to strip clubs and uh, allegedly prostitutes as well. Uh, and I guess there was well, at least the money's getting back into the community. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. They were like charging upwards of like, oh, credit karma, damn you. Well, I'm never using that service. Uh, I, I pop Once I see a pop-up ad for a company, I just, I'll, I'll boycott them. <laughs> That's the worst kind of advertising <laughs> ever. I can't stand it. Yeah, yeah. Especially if I'm using a mobile, like I've, some of them are just impossible to even like right. read, you know, get to the content. It's like, you're not going to win me over that way. Never use but, credit uh, karma. Never, ever, ever. Ever they, they they're the ones that they help annoy you, but I guess they were charging like tens of thousands of dollars in order to do this, and like they recorded, uh, like th- like a bunch of police officers doing it. So like this was like a uh, a big thing in the police department that a lot of people were involved in. It was more than just well, you know, these I, guys. As I well. went to find an article, so I googled NYPD scandal, but I've got five hundred thousand <laughs> results. So uh, I don't know. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> But without the you government, know, who would be bribed for listen, gun permits, right? <laughs> yeah. If no, if it's an NYPD scandal that doesn't involve them like randomly spraying the crowd with gunfire, okay, it's not yeah. that bad. Okay. So this is just a little bit of bribery and graft and whatever and sort of I guess it's extortion in a way, because they're mm-hmm. they're making people pay for the for the right to defend themselves, right? Yeah. And they were also like they, giving these like no. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say they, yeah, they they take it away, and then here's the bill to get it back. Yep. And this one is it's a little larger than you even thought thought it would be, but uh, it's whatever they feel they can get get from their mark, I guess. Yeah, and it's kind of interesting how people and you know this is New York, so they're they're going to be declining anybody they can, but um, you know the, people like 
you or me who I don't have, I don't know about you, but but, but, but like who have like zero no. criminal record would go in and try to get a, a paperwork and they'd make me jump through all the hoops and then they'd end up saying like, nah, we don't trust you. But the people that they were allowing to have guns were like people with like multiple violent priors. <laughs> so they're, so they're the ones that are they're the ones that are buying the permits, the ones that like. If you believe in the whole idea of gun permitting, they're exactly the people you wouldn't want to have a gun permit. Yes, exactly. Is that, is that correct? <laughs> yeah, but all the people, the, all the good people. Uh, how much money you got? <laughs> but what is the argument for gun permits again? Wasn't it? Isn't it to just like keep black people from having guns? Pretty or much. Or is there is it more to, more to it than that? I I don't I forget even where that came from. Uh, um, who knows? Well, it, it's entirely possible. Uh, considering how a lot of these laws usually kind of stem from like old, old racist, uh, like uh, minimum wage was originally uh, supposed to was originally used to keep black people from working. Uh, the unions were pushing for it because black labor was so cheap. Uh, marriage licenses was to prevent interracial marriage. Uh, there's lots of stuff like that. So it's it's entirely possible. I'm not sure about gun licensing. Um, but, you know, we just can't let anybody have guns. <laughs> well, you know, it used to be like, we can't let everybody have a crossbow. Yeah. Oh, we can't let every, you know, we can't let everybody have a pointy stick. Uh, there's, <laughs> there was always an, an enforcement process and a permitting, you a know, the, the, from the chieftain or the king or whoever. Like, we're, we're not just letting anybody walk around able to defend themselves from us. Oh, wait, is that bu- is that bulletproof vest you're wearing? Wait a minute. Yeah. That might impede my ability to kill you. That's another <laughs> felony. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> yeah. So... You know exactly the kind of people that you don't like. If let's just say let's just let's just put on our, our status dunce hats, right? Uh, okay. <laughs> and we're trying to say like maybe you know we should have gun permits to prevent you know the really bad people from having guns. Like the good people should should have guns. Well, here you go. <laughs> this is what happens when you yeah, set, exactly you set yeah. up you're setting up incentives for for corruption. And this was this was right. very deep. No, no, it won't be corrupt. We'll let police be the ones to come in and and decide. And because you know we we trust police. Remember that program in elementary school we all sat through. Remember? Yeah. Dare. We all shook. <laughs> <laughs> Remember they said we're supposed to trust them. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and. Yeah, we should really trust the police because they're the ones we should trust with guns. Also, all the cops are really racist, and all they want to do is kill black people. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking pick one. (laughs) I love that mentality. Yeah. Yeah. Cops are racist, but only they should have guns. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of cops (laughs) killing black people, um, I I can't remember the name of this guy. Every time I mention him, like everybody's like, yeah, you got the name wrong again. It's like, damn it. Um, the uh, the one that Stefan Molyneux uh, was trying to like defend a little bit. He was like, I'm just I'm just giving the facts, but he like omitted certain facts <laughs> to make it look really. Is that lopsided. oh, where the the uh, the kid the kid with Skittles or something? No, um, no, no, not Trayvon. This was um, this was uh, 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 Jesus. It was in North Carolina. Uh, he, I guess he tried to grab the taser and ran off, but failed to get the taser. And uh, he ran off, and while he was running away, the cop was shooting him uh, multiple times at the back. Jesus, what was his name? <laughs> Such. A, wait a minute. You're you're expecting me to remember which time a cop <laughs> shot a, a kid in the back while he was running away? Like, there's something you're gonna have to really narrow that down yeah. to, to trigger something. So but, let's see, um, North. See, I, I have I have to use my phone for, because for some reason, like Fiend Phone was being triggered by my Chrome usage. <laughs> Carolina, Carolina. Oh Jesus! I, autocorrect is literally Hitler. Like literally, Hitler is in my phone correcting, <laughs> miscorrecting my my typing. You know, you, well, you had a story, and I saw one uh, recently that was um, where the officer uh, fired into a a, a car that had was leaving like a scene like they like like these kids were in a car and the guy fired a rifle into the car oh i didn't this was from uh this is this is from uh texas i think or at least i'm reading dallas morning news uh yeah he was pulled over for like marijuana or something like that let's see the um 
Here it is. So he was ex yeah, officer he, he was Michael. The scene. Oh, sorry. You finish your story, then I'll tell this horror story. Okay. So this one is really good because I had done a video about it because Molyneux presented this video where he was like, okay, we you know like they just they just indicted him, so we don't have all the facts just yet. Um, but you know, like here's here's the evidence. But he really gave us like there's a lot of things that he that he omitted. Like he didn't mention the fact that like he uh, it looked it looked as though he may have planted a taser. Um, they went through uh, the guy who got shot, Walter Scott. Here we go, Walter Scott. They went through his Twitter or something like that and was finding like terrible things he said. But like Michael Slager, the police officer who shot him, um, also had stuff, but he didn't he didn't mention that stuff that he was tweeting or whatever. So this is this is new. I guess it just came out uh, oh, a couple hours ago. So ex yeah, officer, so this was um. I remember the video now because there was a video. The video so like goofy. just clearly showed like it basically just you know the guy was like too fat to run after him, so he's like oh, I'll just I'll just execute him. Yeah, like that's the way I I I felt like this guy's just so incompetent. But this yeah this so and and so it's it's all out. That's what makes it different. It was completely out in South the open, Carolina. right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, there was someone who caught it on a cell phone. So um. Which is really interesting about this one was uh, he, the reason why the the man fled it f from from what it looks like we don't really know I mean we can't scan his brain or anything, but uh, it seems as though like he was laid on some child support payments, and in South Carolina where this happened not North Carolina South Carolina he uh, I guess that's you can you can be arrested for having delinquent child support payments so he he fled like he he knew that that was going to be a, an issue so he ran away yeah fifty year old Wil Walter Scott was running away shot him in the back. Um, so the, the update to this thing is it turns out, uh, Michael Slager, uh, Slater, after, after having a mistrial now is pleading guilty. So in a plea deal with the federal prosecutors, former South Carolina police officer, Michael Slater admitted to using excessive force in the shooting death of Walter Scott Slager shot, uh, Slager shot Scott in the back, uh, as the unarmed man was running away from Slager after a traffic stop in April of 2015. In a reversal from previous account, Slager admitted to the court that he did not shoot Scott in self-defense; that his use was uh, use of force was unreasonable. <laughs> so, but uh, what would he? What did he plead guilty to? It wasn't murder. Uh, I think it actually was murder. Let's see. It's with I don't family. think so. I think it was. I think that was part of the plea deal. Was he didn't have to say now. Unless I'm again mixing it up with another case, but I was just looking yeah. for the exact wording. But it was something about like um, curtailing his rights under the color of the law, oh, here or it something. Is. You know, like. Um, okay, so I found it. It's, go ahead. Uh, the civil the civil rights offense was a maximum penalty, so he looks like he's facing life in prison. Um, but uh, he's going to a be civil sentenced. rights offense. Yeah, so se uh, second degree murder, which carries a year up to twenty five years in prison. Wow. It's the same sentence as murder. Is that what you're saying? Um, or is it? The, the plea agreement states that the government will ask the court to apply a sentencing guidelines for second degree murder, which carries up to 25 years in prison. That's what it says. Right. But the plea is is for being guilty of a civil rights violation, yeah. not murder. So it's kind of confusing. Right. But you still I still think that's important. Here's a guy that like executed a man in the back on video and he's still. You know, even if they're going to try to sentence him according to those guidelines, you know, this is all just wiggle, you know, just wiggle. This dude could be out in, you know, very in just a few years, mm -hmm. even, you know, with his plea deal. So um, why isn't he, why isn't he why isn't he, you know, getting a, a ton of bricks dropped on his head? Right. <laughs> like, I mean, literally the way they pile on charges to a mere mundane. Right. It's yeah. like, <laughs> This and, and this is like, yeah, well, you know, I guess we'll we'll let you slide on the murder that we have on video that the whole country saw. But can you just plead guilty to a little something like, you know, I don't I don't even get it. Yeah. So so let me get this. Straight. I'm not so, calling this justice by any any no. any means, like not even close. <laughs> so let me get this straight. So if a cop shoots someone in the back, that's just a civil rights violation. Eh, whatever. But if someone dares pull a knife on someone who wouldn't leave their property, <laughs> that's menacing and oh, brandishing oh, a weapon. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> yep. You know. Uh, but without the police, well, um, <laughs> yeah. If you if you insult the police, you have blood on your hands. Am I right? <laughs> 
The answer is no. Yeah. <laughs> the answer is no, very uh, you much know, a no. Friend, a, a, friend, a friend of mine got busted allegedly as a host of like a big pot mm. party, and he ended up with like six or eight charges, including uh, causing catastrophe. So uh, <laughs> they can. That was the. Uh, the just the, for having a the party. Pot, the pot speakeasy but, that we kept hearing about. Yes. Yeah, you kind of dropped out on me for a second there. Yeah, um, I was typing something. Yeah, that's the notes. The, the smoke easy. <laughs> this uh, it's called a yeah smoke easy. It's kind of like play on the speakeasy of mm -hmm. of the earlier prohibition era. But uh, anyway, we can we can talk about that later if you want. No, we can like talk 20, about that now. Like, I think I think we pretty much uh, okay. covered that. <laughs> okay. There, there ain't anyway. no such thing as a good cop, and it's speaking of bad cops. <laughs> What do they do now? But it's just, you know, highlighting the way they pile on charges, right, for a mere mundane. Mm -hmm. And but somebody who's um, a, a member of uh, the uh, what it, Will Grigg would call him the punitive priesthood. Rest in peace. <laughs> yeah. The, the punitive priesthood gets uh, gets to make these plea deals uh, for, ex you know, after executing somebody on film. But anyway, this pot bust in Philly. <laughs> It was about a week ago, um, N.A. Poe, who's sort of a notable kind of uh, comedy weed, you know, he's like a weed comedian, I guess. He's, and, uh, you know, causes trouble in, in Philly quite a bit. And uh, basically was allegedly there was like a kind of like a marijuana trade show going on <laughs> of some kind. <laughs> <laughs> widely advertised, OK, widely advertised, but um Penalties for possession in Philly now are pretty low. It's like you get like a like a fifty or a hundred dollar ticket, and uh, you're not really in any trouble unless you have serious quantities. But basically, there were a lot of different people in this place, and they kind of like added up all the quantities and put it on all the people that like had booths there. So like twenty two people are facing some pretty serious charges as a result they they arrested like 176 and and let and kept 22 for a week wow anyway yeah so uh you know the it's a it's it's kind of i mean of course it's it's tragic but it's uh it's different than a lot of drug busts because this really went after the sort of the the philly like tax and regulate us crowd like the people that are like really want to be taxed and regulated for weed <laughs> yeah and you know, well, this is it. This is you just got regulated. You know, that's exactly <laughs> what you <laughs> kind of, you've got totally regulated. It kind of reminds me of that meme. And, I love it where it's, they show like the protester getting pepper sprayed. And it says once more government, know, once more government, more government. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful what you wish it's, for. It, yeah, I don't I, I don't want to see people learn that lesson that way. Mm -hmm. I really don't. Because, you know, that's definitely not. And um there's some shot you know, in it, but mm, yeah, it's, it is pretty bad. No, 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 no. But, you know, the um, there is sort of a vulnerability, I think, because people started to think like, you know what? Well, the police are our partners because they've been going to their like organized protests and like scheduled civil disobedience arrests. And so they're having coffee and stuff with civil affairs. Right. Who are these people are trained to like actually have conversations and not reflexively beat you. OK, like it's that that unit. They're like, <laughs> the one we have somebody that can talk. <laughs> yeah. The one who went through that special training to not hit people uh, immediately. Gets, yeah. Wait, uh, wait, <laughs> wait a couple seconds and then beat the right. crap out of them. Right. But uh, it's you know, it's it's that's public affairs. And, and these guys are actually friendly. You see the same guys every event year after year. Um, but, you know, there's always surrounded by the. Um, uh, it's the, the 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 like the strike force and these other units of the Philly Police Department that um, that do all the kidnapping and stuff. But I think because they thought they were having these meetings and and you know d d you know they're just doing their job. Don't disparage the cops. We're we're working with them. We want to be you know <laughs> the cops were really cool. You know like t way too much of that kind of attitude. And I think they started to think that um, somehow they. They were protected, you know, so, uh, nope, <laughs> nope, you're not. <laughs> yep. Oh, I don't know. Man. But anyway, so as a shout out to our, uh, Philly, Philly 22, uh, political weed prisoners. Now it's definitely going to be a sort of a interesting 
interesting to see you know how much trouble these guys are in and how much what charges stick and how far they go yeah it sucks it always sucks seeing people get kind of locked in the cage for uh you know uh, you you had a plant that i that i didn't if you had kratom that would have been fine <laughs> but you had the wrong <laughs> one so we're gonna throw you in a cage now Ugh. Oh, you uh, you also got to hear this this causing catastrophe charge. This is what Poe got <laughs> on top of like everything else. Literally, a bunch causing... of stoners hanging out in a room smoking pot is a catastrophe. Since when? <laughs> let me let me see if I can find the description of this. Are and, they loading up see, too so many can... like p- pizza boxes on the street corner or something? <laughs> It actually has a very, very specific, um, there's a very sp- specific uh, description. And it, it's usually like, if you call, it actually says stuff like if you cause an avalanche, an explosion, <laughs> release poisonous gas, like. <laughs> is that what they're doing is poisonous gas? Like marijuana is poison gas. But it didn't say there was a, there's a separate charge that would be risking a catastrophe this is causing catastrophe oh so not even causing a catastrophe just causing catastrophe is the name of the charge but um yeah so they're basically they're saying you know it was like the equivalent of of of, of like causing an avalanche mm-hmm. you know, like this is this would be the charge they go after you with so anyway yep piling on for to the mere mundane to the mere mundane he's in big trouble yeah, that's a bummer. Uh, oh, um, you should probably give an update because I know you talked about it last time we were on, and I know a lot has has happened since then. But the was it the, was it the Libertarian Party of uh, Pennsylvania that we're gonna have that was gonna have uh, Will Cooley and um, Saul Invictus debate? Uh, yeah, yeah, you that, want, you that probably almost give an happened. To that. Yeah, <laughs> almost happened. <laughs> it um. Well, it it has a it has a happy ending thanks to Vermin Supreme and a twist <laughs> and 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 with with dessert. Okay, this, this, this is news is... to me. I did not know Vermin yeah. Supreme no, had it, a role in this. Oh, please! It started out as a as a grim story of this the this horrible fascist eugenicist who fancies himself somebody that should be in the Libertarian Party. Um, was invited to uh, to to speak at this uh, Mid Atlantic Liberty Conference in Pennsylvania. And and my friend Steve was was the one that did this, and before it even went public, I, he told me about. it. I was like, dude, are, you know, private, like, seriously, you, the 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 fascist guy? Oh, he's not a fascist. No, no, really, the eugenicist. Oh, no, he's not eugenicist anymore. Uh, really? You know, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, but anyway, so well, before you I go on out, well, before you go on, you're not talking about Miller Miller, right? <laughs> <laughs> you said Steve, and I know a lot of people are like your friend Steve. You must no, be talking about Miller. Right? Miller. No, this is Steve Sheets. Okay. okay yeah. The, okay. The, no. The, well, the other no, thing. No, was... Anyone who knows Miller Miller would know that he would never be the one organizing an event okay. featuring a Nazi. In okay. Fact, Miller Miller goes to. I just wanted to make fact, that before clear. I even before <laughs> I, I didn't even realize before Miller brought it to my attention that there was a whole group of people who like recreationally searched out for neo Nazis to harass them. OK, because <laughs> I didn't even I didn't even realize that neo-Nazis were a thing like I, I like, really, that's still a thing. And when he said, yeah, we're going to go out there and give them what to give them hell. I'm like, really, is that even necessary? Like, I didn't even I had no idea. Now, but, um, the other anyway, thing was yeah, so, the other the other thing was like, I remember there was some threat. I think it may have been on your post, but there was people like trying to defend Saul. And he was like, no, he's not a fascist. He's not a eugenicist. He, you know, he's he, you constantly. Know, he, yeah, he's, he's a libertarian. And I'm just like, and I'll, I'll post him this video. And he, there's a video where he's saying, like, I am no longer a libertarian. I am now considering myself a reactionary. Libertarians are naive and they need to get on board with me. I'm like. What about this? And they're like, that doesn't say he's that he's a reactionary. It's like he explicitly says in the video, I'm no longer a libertarian. I am now uh, considering myself a reactionary. Like what? Right. What? Like, how how else can you possibly word that to make it any more explicit where you would accept it? (laughs) Well, what if he had like what if? Well, you know, what if he had Mussolini's logo tattooed on his back? Mm -mm. Like, would that be a clue? Well, no, no, that's just a traditional Italian heritage. (laughs) And 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 what what are those what are those bundles of stick with the axe thing that that the eagle is gripping? (laughs) Oh, what? Oh, what is that? Oh, I don't even know what that is. Yeah. Well, they, they have that in Congress. Yeah. 
Like, it's a good thing. Whatever. Whatever. (laughs) You know, I get it. These people are out there and all kinds of weirdos seek out libertarian groups for, you know, to to enter and to try to take over Mm -hmm. because, you know, they're they're, you know, poorly staffed and and meager resources. It's pretty easy for somebody with an agenda to just swoop in and. And, and start calling the shots. Like if somebody just if somebody just shows up at a libertarian meeting and says, "Hey, can I be in charge?" They'll probably say yes. They probably will be like, "Finally, somebody wants to take charge." But uh, well, anyway, in this yeah, case, cool, like, okay, they they invite they invite. So he invites him. Will says, "Hey, wait a minute. I'm on the bill too. I'm not going to be on the bill with this guy unless we can make it a debate at least. Yeah. You know, at least I can try to challenge him." He, he's he's and, my favorite uh, redneck Muslim. Yeah, the best. The best. So, um, Frank, so the, the he, best. He's tremendous, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> Terrific. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> all the other ones are terrible. Sad. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I miss your Trump Im- impressions, and they were so much funnier before he became president, mm. and now they're just more more horrific and tragic. But uh, when we never thought he could be president, they were hilarious. (laughs) Back when I endorsed him (laughs) for like three weeks. (laughs) Well, uh, so um, I forget what we were talking about. The um, Will Cooley and oh, so anyway, so now and now (laughs) now Antifa (laughs) now Antifa finds out about it. Okay, so so now the word goes out. Now they're doxing the Libertarian Party of Pennsylvania and sharing like this. These are the organizers and this is the thing. And anyway, so all kinds of that that like left wing uh, anti fascist stuff gets stirred up. And I'm Uh, allegedly anti fascist, allegedly anti fascist. I'd say they're fascist, but go ahead. <laughs> well, you know, this, these particular the, – I don't know Certainly really any of the individuals involved, but there was this particular Facebook group called the uh, East, Shore, East Shore Antifa or something okay. like that. I don't know what it is. The Boston but, one is, um, is, is – the Boston, Boston Antifa, that one's the, uh, the, the Poe. Yeah, they're the, uh, the trolls. Whatever awesome. it is. They're, you got to check out Boston Antifa. It's hilarious. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> well, these guys um, – they were actually being really funny about it. They were coming out with great memes. They were definitely telling people to call the hotel and to register a complaint. But I never saw any like we're gonna we're you know bring your weapons and we're gonna kick their butt. And it really, was just more, you know, just uh, just trolling. And we're gonna do a street demonstration and we're gonna call the hotel and let them know that you know. <laughs> how we feel about it <laughs> and the, <laughs> so so the hotel a week before the event uh calls steve sheets and says um uh would you mind canceling the event please <laughs> please cancel <laughs> like don't make us have to kick you out because that you know but if you could please leave that would be great <laughs> and uh so so they canceled the event there and said like well we're going to get another event another location so a few days go by and i'm you know i'm not really uh, i'm not in the loop or anything about where the new place is going to be like i'm every once in a while i'm checking like the antifa facebook page to see if there's any news because they're the only ones that are really (laughs) really on top of it (laughs) but uh so eventually they're like um the before i even knew about the new place it was already can't they had already canceled okay and I was like, well, what, what happened? Well, because somewhere between the first event, get the venue getting canceled, and the second, Vermin Supreme announces a pie bounty on, on Augustus Invictus. <laughs> okay. And it was a, immediately announced if you could hit him with a pie, you get $250. Okay. Like, oh, all right. Okay. Now, Vermin oh, Supreme Vermin's to the rescue awesome. here. Now, yeah. and I'm not saying that anybody should be hit with a pie or under what circumstances or whatever. Like that is that that might be a aggr- whatever aggression, whatever. I'm certainly going to laugh my ass off though if somebody would hit him with a pie. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so that, It'd be that's funny all if anybody good. Anybody got and, hit with a pie? I don't. Ron Paul hit him yeah. with a pie. <laughs> so, but anyway, this 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 was this created a, tr- a trigger. 
Mm-hmm. And oh, he come. Uh, Augustus came out with this video of like now his trip to Pennsylvania is is akin to Sherman's march through the South, where he's going to destroy and burn everything on his way, and there's going to be hell to pay, and it's going to be a throwdown, and we're defending ourselves, and come on at us with your pies, and we're showing, you know, <laughs> <laughs> anti pie action. Oh, you mean? <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that should be the so, show title. So, if I didn't so have more like, you know, the entire title event, already, yeah. so <laughs> the, ent- <laughs> the entire event was canceled. They had to just they just threw in the towel. They're like, uh, that's it. <laughs> Never mind. And then the um, Mid Atlantic Liberty Conference died, thanks to pies. <laughs> <sighs> I never thought, but I, I thought it was great. <laughs> Pie, <laughs> you know, I never, I never really knew. You know, I've always kind of liked Vermin Supreme, but I never thought of that like he would be the guy to like come to the rescue in a, in a in a dark day in Pennsylvania where <laughs> everyone was getting everyone was getting way too serious about it. Like everyone, it's like first of all the like the Antifa and these uh, whatever alt right people. These are so there's hardly any of these people at all. Like who cares if they hate one another? I certainly don't, and I don't really. I'm not going to be drawn into their, to their little, you know, fighting match. Um, but it's uh, not a fighting. It's, it's it's political larping. I think that's that's what James Weeks was saying. That it's just, it's, yeah, political larping. Live action role play. You know, the the, the people that dress up like, um, like a like medieval knights and hit each other with foam swords. It's, 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 it's pretty much that. Yeah. And you know, it doesn't really concern me if they could if they could if we had like a Thunderdome to put them in. That would be cool. <laughs> but and, and anyway, I don't really, you know, just it's, it's not a big anyway, but it's just too serious. Everyone was like, this is this is awful. And this is everyone's like really grumpy about it. And Vermin just rolls in talking pies and the memes <laughs> start flowing again. And, and once again, that like the, the universe was restored. It um, thank you, Vermin. Thank yes. you, Vermin Supreme. <laughs> Anyway, that's the update on that. If <laughs> if you have a problem with fascists in your neighborhood, just make sure Vermin's in on it, yeah. right? Or just yeah. handle it. <laughs> Throw pies at everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Antifa too. Just give them a good old pie in the face. <laughs> Seriously, they they need some pies too. Yeah. Definitely, they're they're some they're grumpy. Yeah, they're definitely grumpy. Yeah, I mean they're grumpy right now about the uh, the the hand symbol for OK. You know where you do the little ring finger and the thumb. The three fingers. Oh, up. another great troll! I yeah, love that. Brilliant. Somebody. <laughs> that was a four chan troll, right? Yeah. Where they're like, let's let's pretend that the OK symbol is an alt right symbol, and yeah. they got media to run with it, and start condemning people who are making that OK symbol in photos. That is, oh, I love that stuff. Oh, I love how like there was pictures of like there was people that were fighting and going like, "Oh, look at all these white supremacists!" And you just see like a bunch of black people giving the OK symbol. <laughs> 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 or I, I love it, the it just one... reminded me of the um of the uh, what was it the trash trash dove or what, <laughs> what, 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 what <laughs> yeah, the trash yeah the trash dove <laughs> or trash pigeon where they did where, where the, right there they declared that to be an alt right symbol and basically <laughs> just took it. <laughs> And made it an alt right symbol by declaring it that. Like, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I've, I've been getting accused of being uh, an alt writer and a reactionary and all this other stuff because I have a a, a Pepe. Uh, <laughs> I have a very rare Pepe uh, as my pro t- profile on uh, Facebook, but it's Max Sterner. <laughs> so like, people don't know what to make of it. <laughs> They're like, "Is he alt right? Is, is he an egoist? Like, he can't be both." Like, <laughs> I just call him an see, but right nobody knows who works. nobody knows who Max Sterner is, but they do know who Pepe the Frog is. Yeah, so yeah. there you go. Well, some of them did. I had one person go like, "You're a reactionary." By the way, Max Sterner hated capitalism. <laughs> 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 Wait, what? <laughs> did you even think about that it. before you hit, before you hit enter? <laughs> but anyways, um. Yeah, so I guess we should move on to more somber, somber uh, topics. Um, Will Grigg. Now, I I I did not know who this guy was until after he passed away, and then everybody was talking so highly of him, and I was like, okay, I don't know who this is, but everything that I've kind of stumbled across regarding what he's been saying, like the guy was a really good, really good, um, really good writer. Like he, he, the way he words things was really, really great you know more about him than i do this is all just news to me 
But would you would you say he's H L Mankin level or? Uh, <laughs> I don't think anybody could be H L Mankin, well, but yeah. well, he's <laughs> certainly the, the best of of anyone of uh, sort of my generation okay. and our you know contemporary writers. He was just head and shoulders above above anybody you're going to read on lourockwell.com or you know any of our normal libertarian blogs uh the, the, just a master wordsmith he and he would always just peel away the euphemisms when he and his his content was was always a, uh, usually about police abuse and he would do these in-depth stories like getting deep like really getting interviews with witnesses and victims and really taking apart police abuse in, on a, in a very in-depth way, hmm. uh, very dark material, and they're sometimes so so dark that just I would have trouble even reading the whole article because halfway through, like I'm just ready to like rip my hair out. But he had the patience to to really devote to these topics. But he would use language that could keep me reading, like um, you know, if you like some terms he would use, um, you know, if he was referring to a cop, he might refer to them as a as a tax devouring bully. <laughs> or the, or um, you know, refer to his tax fattened chin. You, you know, and, and, or did you hear what he said? <laughs> he said that cops were terrible people. <laughs> <laughs> Here's where he works. This is where his kids sleep. That's right. <laughs> yeah, we'll send a reporter uh, out in the no, morning. Don't, no, seriously, don't don't give him any ideas. Yeah. But. Um, <laughs> But, you know, would refer to their police, you know, first of all, like a term that I've incorporated into my own vocabulary that I got from him is uh, mundane. Like it's you're the it's the cops and it's the mundanes. You're we're just the mere mundanes. Uh. And um, he used to he got a lot of references from science fiction. And I'm pretty sure that's a reference to Babylon 5 where there were this, the Psycops. I don't know if you've ever familiar with this series, sci fi series from the 90s, but there were these. Psychops, these basically like the worst police you can imagine that had like could like read your minds and whatnot, but they wore gloves so they didn't actually have to touch a mere mundane Ew. or the people without their special powers, right? But um, so yeah, the so so I just I I constantly think of my you know of us as mere mundanes and they're the they're the psychops, but. Um, <laughs> You know, referring to their actions, you know, acts of, you know, describing them, you know, accurately, their, their stuff, you know, we'd use like state sponsored terrorism, um, you know, just taking away every euphemism and presenting a narrative that really just lays out the nature of police like I, nobody else, nobody else does. Um, so Pro Libertate is his blog and, and his work is extensive. And if, even if people are just discovering him now, they can. There's so much to read, and he was also just a just the. I got to meet him at um, Ernie's thing in, in Freedom Summit in Phoenix, and the guy's just the most gracious, humble, um, you know, just super kind guy. And it was I was so happy to have had a chance to meet him. He doesn't fly because he doesn't want to be abused by the TSA. I am the same so way. Kind of... <laughs> like I, I love flying. Like every time I've ever been on a plane, I've been happy. It's just, it's just a wonderful experience. But the fact that I have to go through all that TSA stuff, I, I haven't flown since two thousand and five. Yeah, every, I, and I, I love road trips too. So I'll just offer. Those. It takes all the fun out of it. Yeah. And, and, you know, it, it's just because that you. We, we feel it, I think, more deeply than a lot of people do. We, mm -hmm. you know, we feel the violations as, as they're happening and are so outraged that other people just, you know, have learned to accept it. Um, we went to, it reminds me, uh, yesterday I went with, with uh, Josie the Outlaw over to the Philadelphia court because our friends were having a hearing after that pot bust. Mm -hmm. And so we're, so we're going into the courthouse and, you know, immediately I, you know, I just get that vibe, you know, like uh, just this is sort of this bubble where their mentality and superiority just goes unchecked, you know, for so long that this entire like, uh, su you know, culture of superiority uh, of like animal handlers, they, they literally were like, you know, it's, it's animal handlers at, at the, um, you know, at, at the, the cattle market. That's the way these guys act. But so we, we're going through and, um, you know, and Josie's like, uh, she's like, I don't know, should I put my knife in the car? And uh, <laughs> and I said, you know, I said, well, you know, we could do that. Um, 
in, a, in the Philadelphia and in the Montgomery County Courthouse, like near my house, they do a check thing. Like they t- actually take my nail clippers off my keychain and I check them. Ah. Right. So we just kind of assumed it would be something like that. Like, well, I don't know. They'll either let you take it in or they won't. You know, we can always take it back to the car if you need to. So um, first they're like, wait, whoa, camera tripod. Oh, no, no, that you, you, no, no. And then and then they're and then like, oh, what's this? Brass knuckles knife. Oh, oh, ooh, you know, we can take you can take you to jail. Oh, oh, you know, and they start now the chest thumping starts. Mm-hmm. OK. Like, oh, boy, you know, literally like a pocket knife, a little you know, smaller than Jeremy's. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, he, I don't think he has that knife. <laughs> I think it's, oh. I think the cops t- stole it. You know, evidence. What I what I've really wanted to do is, um, I know Penn and Teller sell them, uh, but what they have are these uh, like metal cards. They're like the size of like a playing card or a business card, and uh, they're they're kind of thick, but it's just enough metal to set off a a metal detector. And <laughs> what you do is you you put it on, and on on the on the uh, card itself, it's it's it has like the Bill of Rights. <laughs> right, Bill, Bill of Rights Travel Edition. Yeah, yeah I've seen this. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and what you do is when you go through and set off the alarm, they like, do you have anything you're not supposed to have? Like, oh yeah, I'm sorry. I, these are my rights. You can take them. <laughs> 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 I've always been tempted to do that, but at the same time, it's like, Ugh, but it's a Bill of Rights, though. <laughs> so yeah. well. So anyway, so we're at this. We're in the middle of this checkpoint, okay? Mm-hmm. And uh, so they they start, you know, acting like, you know, we, yeah, I don't know. We're supposed to, we're, you know, we can lock you up for that, you know. And, and I'm like, I'm like, well, so I said something very mildly snarky, maybe like, well, you know, what about my toenail clippers? Are you, are you, you know, am I in trouble for that too? And uh, now the guy is addressing me, okay? And he's like, oh, you think you're funny, huh? You know, blah blah blah. <laughs> like, you know what? Why would I think that, sir? (laughs) It's like, you better watch it or I could lock up. I could lock her up. (laughs) He's he's now, I guess he's interpreted her as like my woman and like, I'll take your woman. You better behave or I'll, we'll we'll take your woman away. Like, (laughs) what the hell are these people? Like, man, just the the worst, the worst of humanity. I, I was just, but anyway, so. Basically, we were they, you know, they were like, you know, all right, we reluctantly let us get away, and like, yeah, don't come back. <laughs> so we just <laughs> left. <laughs> we left and ended up going to the bar. We're like, you know what? It's just really you people like us don't belong in those kind of situations. We yeah. can't, we can't just keep our mouth shut and, and just kind of nod and blink, you know, bat our eyes and 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 deal with it. So anyway, yeah. I tried. I tried, and I'm, I'm I'm glad I'm glad my snarkiness didn't get Josie arrested. <laughs> Although she would have been fine with that, I would not. However, yeah, it kind of reminds me of how I went, like how I went to jury duty. Um, I got called for jury duty like a couple of years ago, and they haven't called me back since, and I know why. <laughs> but uh, you know, I I did the whole thing and just the, just going the multiple that. felonies. No, 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 no felonies. Oh. My record's clean oh. right now. Knock on. Oh, that's uh, right. You're, uh, right, your guitar. record is clean. Yeah, uh, but I had to do jury duty and like just going through that metal detector, and they were taking my shoes off. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> really the shoes too okay um it, yeah it was just like a weird feeling but i just remember like i just want to write your everything. shoes yeah well you know because the you shoe take bomber. off your shoes for jury duty yeah because <laughs> of the shoe bomber <laughs> no no they were actually looking for jury nullification pamphlets that could have been hidden <laughs> in the soul like, it's, it's been a problem and uh they've come up with a solution yeah so the um the trial which i can i can talk about it now because i'm way off of it now uh, they built this really like kind of uh, hotel um, thing on the strip at, at city center, and there was a dispute between the the iron workers and the the contract or the, or the contractors for the hotel or something like that. And it was a really high profile case, and it was going to be a year long, and we were only going to get paid fifty bucks a day uh, since it was going to be so long. It was they, they, it was more than five bucks, so it was like fifty bucks a day and all this other stuff. And I was like. I can get out of this thing and no problem. <laughs> and all I did was just like, I just answered all the questions as, as I would. And it was 
pretty normal until you got into like the back page where this is like, do you have any political leanings that may dissuade you? And I was like, well, I find this government to, uh, I find this court and the government that that runs it as illegitimate. <laughs> and like I put on what the narco capitalist, and it's true. I mean, like they can go, they can go and do digging on my Facebook page all they want, and they're just going to get consistent me, <laughs> consistently me bashing the state <laughs> that implies they that yeah. would imply they have that that skill mm-hmm. that there's someone with an ability to google your name or whatever <laughs> right like anyone would even care yeah i think they're just like we got another one of them people who answered yeah. well, they, <laughs> i guess yeah they had like this lottery or whatever and you know i, I don't know how they did it but they it looks sounds like they just randomly chose a bunch of people to come back uh for another day and then uh, they they called me and said, oh yeah, we want you uh, want you to come in, um, you know, whenever. And I was like, okay. And so that the day that happened, I called them up and um, I was like, oh, you know, it looks like I'm gonna be a little bit late. I'm stuck in traffic. And they're like, oh, don't worry, just get, come on in and we'll we'll get you right in. I get a phone call. They told them my name and everything, and they said, okay. Uh, and, and I get a call like five minutes later. They said, uh, yeah, you just been you just been dismissed. <laughs> I was like, oh, you read the back page. <laughs> <laughs> you read the last page or two. All right, cool. <laughs> I haven't been called back to jury duty since. Yeah, I'm not a big fan well, of me doing jury nullification. I think it's a good idea to like talk to to normies about it because that that's that's where you're gonna get some segue. But for me, I see jury nullification as like another form of voting. <laughs> but that's the way I view it. Yeah, it's a really long and effective ineffective way of voting. <laughs> but you well, know, you except get, except that it's. It, your vote it actually counts. That's the big difference. Right. And you don't need a majority either. It's, so those are kind of like two big differences that um, I'm not saying you should, you know, I'm not saying anybody should, should, you know, the, should feel obligated to participate in the circus. But for those that do, hey, if you've got the time, yeah. go in there and stir some trouble up. Who knows, like, what kind of like horrible p- person you could get off the hook or, uh, <laughs> Yeah. I, I, don't I know. was talking. Maybe to, you see somebody that's not guilty, but like you really don't like them, and yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I was having. In reality, this, is you no, might get somebody off the hook that that needs. Yeah. It. Um, so I was talking to uh, Stefan Kinsella, who is like a patent attorney, and he was like, "This is kind of interesting. I never thought of it like that." But he was like, "But I was like, in, in order for me to get onto a jury, I would have to lie on that that thing where they not make, true. Well, for not me, true. Well." Well, I would have to base. I would have to tell them that I'm, you know, I, I'm not an anarchist. I don't, you know, I don't see this court as illegitimate. They're not that's... necessarily going to ask you if you're an anarchist or not. Right. That is. No, 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 that no, no, is... no, 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 no. Because when I sign that paperwork, <laughs> it's asked on there. Has, have I ever thought about overthrowing the government? That was one of the questions. Oh, kind of really? Like, yeah, it was like one of those questions you see on like when you when you apply to to join the the uh, the army or whatever. One of the questions is, have you ever or planned uh, planned uh, to overthrow the government. It's like, well, I'm an anarchist, so yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, you if you know. got that question, I don't think that's. I don't think I didn't get. I I got a jury summons and I did not have a question okay. like that. Yeah. So I, that you know, I think they can ask pretty much anything. But um, first of all, it you know, you're allowed to lie if you want to. Nobody cares, right? No, it's it's like it's like when it's like, hey, is is Anna Frank hiding in the attic? You know, yeah. you can say no. You can say no, and well, it's from a moral no, standpoint. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, from a moral standpoint, yeah, I have no problem with it. But when, when I when I'm being threatened with perjury for lying on the question, okay. So yeah. so here's what you do. <laughs> I'm good with that. <laughs> for anybody that's curious, yeah. here's here's what you do. And there's strategies. The fully informed jury association has a PDF called called Surviving uh, Voir Dire, and it's um, or Voir Dire, and it's uh, just basically tips on how to answer honestly without volunteering like disqualifying information. Oh, okay. Basically, shut your mouth as much as possible. Uh, things like professional associations might come up, okay? Are you a member of any associations, right? Well, you know what? As far as you're concerned, you could just say, you know what? I I, I quit the NRA this morning, and I'll rejoin this afternoon, okay? <laughs> like, <laughs> nobody Shit. cares, right? Yeah. Like, you can, you can work it out honestly – um, you know, are there any bumper stickers on your car might be a question they ask, right? So, you know, 
drive, you know, have somebody drop you off with that that doesn't that has a car without bumper stickers, you know, so you can say that, you know, Let's take an Uber, whatever. Yeah. There's I'm just saying there's plenty of ways to answer these questions that sound, you know, just like a normal person. Um, but, you know, I'll, but, you know, aren't making you lie. So for those that are uncomfortable with that, that's understandable. But uh, basically, just don't volunteer stuff. And but if you want to get out, volunteer stuff. Yeah. Then you're out. <laughs> yeah. So for me, it'd be a really big financial hardship to forego work, especially at in, 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 in my job. They don't pay for jury uh, jury notification. They don't. Pay. I'll, <laughs> That'd I'll be pay awesome you. I'll tell you what. <laughs> this, you know, this is what we should do. Is you know what? It you know it's. Jury duty only pays five dollars a day. Yeah. Jury nullification pays twenty dollars a day. <laughs> <laughs> Got jury duty? You need twenty bucks? Yeah. You know, this is how you get it. Yep. That'd be. T- hey, speaking of, uh, do you, Keith Wood. Do you know? Do you know Keith Wood? Mm, so, mm. Uh, he's in Michigan. He's on trial next week or at the end of the, this month for pamphleting at a oh. courthouse. Literally, he's got a misdemeanor charge. He um, they drop felony charges, but they're freaking sticking with get this jury tampering charges. But there wasn't any even there wasn't even a jury like seated the day he was pamphleting. Huh. Okay, so, so that would be the, a free speech the, issue then. Well, all the jury tampering laws I've ever seen are very specific. You have to have a specific juror in a specific case trying to get a specific verdict. Yeah. one, two, three quite criteria are required. And they'll freaking make the make the shit up, but in the end, if they don't have those three, it's there's no way to read the law any other way. But yet here they are. Um, so I think it's just like they're backed into the corner. Like we're not going to quit. We're still going to hold. We still got to be guilty of something, or we look bad. Yep. So anyway, I might go pamphlet at his trial. I think that would be fun <laughs> to like pamphlet at a trial for a guy on trial for pamphleting, handing out the same pamphlet that he was handing out. <laughs> That'd be brilliant. Good luck. But it actually would be it could you know it could be a waste of time because presumably the evidence against him will be the pamphlet. So he <laughs> oh, he no, would I actually be the sure be that... the one giving them the pamphlet. What is <laughs> what did you <laughs> Oh no, I was just making sure that the, the, the jury had accurate copies of the pamphlet. <laughs> <laughs> you want like... him to see what he was doing, right? This is it. <laughs> I'm te- I'm tempted to go. It's a, it would be about a nine hour drive, and I'm like, mm. but there is a brewery I could stop in. I w- I've always wanted to go to in Cleveland, that I would never have a reason to go to Cleveland. So, yeah. Anyway, wait a minute. I thought you think like a brewery is in Cleveland. I you I would imagine like they're using kind of wastewater, but then I was like, no, that's stone. Um, so I should we. Should, we should. Met, there was one more thing that I wanted to announce that, that I that I slipped over in my notes. Uh, one of our also another news about our co-hosts. Um, I guess. Okay, so Seamus, you know how he does the freedom tunes, right? Have you have you been following the uh, the cartoons that he's been making? No, I haven't. Ah, what? It's it's one of the best things on YouTube. Period. <laughs> like they're really good. So he's been making a lot of like uh, really good cards. He he did one about Ben Shapiro. I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with with him, right? Who Ben Shapiro is and what he does, like how he goes to college campuses and argues with leftists. Um, I get the idea. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, like Milo kind of got his shtick from that. He basically taking that and then bastardizing it and making it just just a, a dumb shtick. Um, but yeah. Uh, he's a really smart guy. He's got a podcast. It's like I think it's the number one conservative podcast on the internet. Period. Like he, uh, he was he used to work for Breitbart. Uh, anyways, so he did a he did a thing kind of like lovingly lampooning Ben Shapiro uh, and, how, and how he does his speeches and whatever. And Ben Shapiro and Andrew Clavin both like mentioned them on his podcast. And now he's getting like super nice. popular. Yeah. Yay! Yeah. Awesome. He's gonna be too big for us soon. <laughs> <laughs> way too big for us i love so. it yeah i, oh, yeah, love, I love it too yep so uh yep I'm trying to help him uh <laughs> get ben shapiro to come on and do like record something for another cartoon that'd be fun um but yeah so that was all the things yeah that was the only thing i, I missed so Is it's any- nice to see at least some of your co-hosts succeeding yeah um well, instead of like going to jail for uh, what was it? What was he? What's he in jail? <laughs> did he? He's out, by the way. He, I, I did yeah. see a post. He's out of jail. Yeah, he's out so. of jail. 
He, he just yeah. got out of jail this Menacing. morning. Menacing. <laughs> that menacer. <laughs> We're gonna... Menacing Jeremy. Yeah. Oh, well, man. Seamus is and pretty his, menacing, oh, too, though. <laughs> I got to give, well, I got to give Jeremy, you know, I give Jeremy a lot of credit for the mug shot. When you Google his name, you'll see that mug shot. Yeah. And he's given a really, I think he's that's giving gonna be the, a that's gonna sort be of an picture. apropos ex- expression. <laughs> I think he's really sort of, I think he's he's really captured a feeling in, in his eyes. Um, so. Yeah, it's the same look that I gave when I found out he was arrested for pulling a knife on someone who wouldn't leave his property. <laughs> like, really? That's what we're. Just... I'm not even saying that he pulled a knife on somebody. Like, when you're standing like 20 feet away yeah. and you're just sort of pointing with it and, and commanding them to leave, I don't really see that as being threatening at that distance. And when you're in, a, when you're stationary, yeah, it's not like he was moving towards him them or any way. Like. To me, it was just sort of like, you know, accentuating the point that you are being firmly instructed to vacate. <laughs> and, and, and it uh, looked like he wasn't he wasn't brandishing at her like, yeah, I'm going to stab you. It was more like he was using the, the knife to point <laughs> like that's yeah, where you no, need to be. Like, I didn't, right. It's not like he he didn't even like have it in like a like a like a combat pose or yeah. anything, you know, or just like, come at me. I'll cut your heart out. You know, like nothing like that. So, yeah. Um, Anyway, still, I got to say, poor media relations etiquette. I'm yeah. saying he needs a he needs to do a little media relations 101. But let's go back to school. Let's cover some of the basics when handling the media. Yeah, don't James, don't James, make them fear for their lives. James Week gave the best advice ever. It is uh, next time you have to do uh, media relations, just strip down to your man thong and give him a dance. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and 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 when you or think throw, about or it, or throw a pie at him. <laughs> no, I'm guessing if it, you know what, Jeremy. If Jeremy had done the gym week strategy, they could not have left the property fast enough. Yeah, this would have never become an issue. They would have been in their van down the road, gone. Uh, googling anyway. cheap man thongs there. <laughs> Order. <laughs> by all of them. All your whole lot. Wearing them every day. <laughs> Next time I get confronted by the media, I'm just going to rip all the clothes off. <laughs> like, what? Come at me and look at me. I just want a hug. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, you know, it's sad, though, because you know, Jeremy's such a nice guy. Yeah. I really feel like, wow, everybody really is good, is coming away with this, you know, with like a completely um, distorted view of the kind of person he is. You know, and I just... <sighs> Like I said, makes me scared to go on the internet. I might just have to be like, you know, it's too risky and, and drop out because, yeah, there but go the grace of God, go I. Yeah. You know, constantly making stupid, snarky remarks that, that the only reason I haven't ended up in that much trouble is because I'm not as successful as he is. Yeah. So. And, and I will say this, to this credit, even all the death threats and all of the, the, the plan of arsoning his house and all that other stuff and all the terrible comments that he's got, on that particular video, I saw a couple of comments saying, like, okay, I really disagreed with what he said, but that reporter was way out of line. She should have left. <laughs> like, he could totally Good. tell that, he was, that she was agitating him. So there's that. I mean, there's a lot of other people that are like, well, he didn't have a no trespass sign. You don't need a no trespass sign when you're telling him, get the fuck off my property. <laughs> like, get off my property. Right. And, and, yeah. and, you know, didn't, and what happened? Go. What happened? Were they were they banging on his door for 20 minutes before that? Yeah. Well, yeah, possibly. Yeah. They they gave a they, they showed the video and it was it was edited. And all, all every edited video is, is a form of lying, I guess. Just, but you know you have to do, but you have to do it in a way where you're reducing the amount of lie as much as possible, right? I think that's kind of the rule. I think that's that was what I heard from. Um, it was really good. Was uh, Penn Gillette when he was doing the um, was it that Michael Moore hates America movie? And he was like, you know, just just the fact that you didn't show me walking into the kitchen to get us something to drink, uh, you know, and then come back, you know, is, is automatically negating a lot of information for, from your audience. He's like, but what what you have to do is when you remove stuff from the uh, from your edit uh, from your footage that it's not used to 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 paint a, a scenario that wasn't entirely incorrect. And so I don't know if they did that or not. I mean, it could have been like, oh, as soon as he saw him, he just pulled the knife out and said, get out of my yard. But you can see that what he was saying was she wouldn't leave my property. <laughs> so, yeah. 
that was that was my rant. So, yeah. So do you have anything else you wanted to talk about or anything you want to plug? We've been going on for about over oh, an hour. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, the the only thing I wanted to see it, hear your comments about was this new conspiracy theory I just heard about that says nukes are fake. <laughs> and Why and I thought in my that, notes. <laughs> and I thought, well, I saw a video that was posted by Jeff Berwick, which was like an hour and a half, and I was able to watch like the first five minutes of basically a guy showing showing like those test footages of nukes going off and just being like, yeah, it looks fake. Yeah, it's fake. <laughs> fake. Fake. <laughs> looks fake. You can tell that's fake. See? Fake. That, this is like the extent of the argument. And I'm like, oh. No, see, oh. no, see, I, don't, I, don't, I think you missed the point of the video. You see, it's not possible for a nuke to work because of the gravitational pull of the Earth it does not exist because we're on a flat Earth and gravity is a, is a farce. <laughs> I, you know, but I was thinking you might have a uh, get on my level. Cock. Living in living in Nevada, like isn't like half of Nevada like glow in the dark still from like nuclear <laughs> testing? I mean, can you just like put your hands out and like certain area and be like, yeah, I can still feel it. Like yeah. it's that. <laughs> How Actually, can you deny that nukes went off here when when it's like a still still uh, radioactive? Yeah, it was a big it was a big pastime for a while. When people would go to Vegas gamble all day and then at night go watch the the nuclear bombs on on the on the horizon you can actually see them setting a really them off. yeah back back in the wow. back in those days yeah uh before they they stopped doing it fake um, just just uh, fake, a, a one fake you are fake news <laughs> <laughs> they showed these they showed this one video of these guys like stacking boxes of dynamite they're like nope that's just conventional explosive just stack up enough dynamite that, that. <laughs> Yeah, when they say these what? bombs have like an equivalent of you know twenty thousand tons of TNT, that's all it is. It's just twenty thousand tons of TNT. That Which would actually be like the size of Rhode Island and by the time <laughs> like you, you've got enough TNT in yeah. place, and and uh, and like like Bikini um, Atoll, like there's you know you can still go out and measure the radiation now. You, yeah. It's still and there's like uh, wrecked ships that had their like halt where the the test ships just like had their decks ripped and melted and blasted by the shock wave and like fake <laughs> fake yeah, fake news <laughs> but you know it kind of reminds me of that vegas vacation where he was like you can hardly tell that he used to test nuclear bombs out here and starts cooking on the rocks <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was all fake. <laughs> but it's, it, it really just made me think of like wow this is like a whole genre where basically your whole argument is based on on how dumb you are. Yeah. Like I can't imagine <laughs> yeah, how a nuclear a bomb could work. Therefore, fake. Yeah. Right? I can't imagine this. Therefore, I can't believe it. Yep. It's like you're so un like <laughs> well, what have you read about it? Nothing. Oh, okay. <laughs> it just looks fake. It looks CGI. Oh, that's yeah, a lot. Fake. That's a lot of the uh, the arguments for like the no planer nine eleven truthers. <laughs> it's just like it looks fake. You could you could totally tell Edel looks like a mask. It looks fake. <laughs> like no. <laughs> <laughs> but this is what passes for an argument. Yeah. I, you know, it's just like oh, you know. Yep. <sighs> we all know that's so, not an argument. But of course, it's fucking Berwick, man. He thinks the horse is flat. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I don't think that's fair to say. He did have a guy who made the argument on Anarchast, and I'd listen to that show because that was kind of early on so in this, like, crazy. are people seriously getting a microphone to talk about this? <laughs> and even even Ber Berwick was very skeptical. He's like, I don't know. I guess we should talk uh, about this, but I don't I... – uh, he still had him on the show. Uh, just to, just he, to hand he was him the giving mic. him really Larry King softball questions, like super Larry King <laughs> <laughs> like he did wasn't even like uh <laughs> like you know asking him serious questions about this but um anyways yeah over with the shemitah Hilarious. yeah oh the economy is going to collapse you know because the shemitah and then what happened oh well the refugee crisis happened so that's that's what it was okay i guess that's what qualifies as an economic collapse <laughs> Yeah, it's you know when you're when you're you make a living off making predictions. Well, good luck. Yeah, good luck. Yep, good luck with that. If I made my living off of doing productions, I would have lost out on uh, Trump being uh, Trump being president. I thought Hillary was going to win. Thought she had it wrapped up for sure. Didn't. 
Uh, but I was right about him just going to be just another Republican. I was right. I was right about that. But you know what? I was. I didn't. I I thought the deep state was going to win, but I thought that meant Hillary. I was right that the st- <laughs> deep state won, but I just didn't. I didn't realize that they had worked something out with Donald as well. Uh, okay. So um, that was my. That's what I didn't expect. I yeah. thought. Uh, you know. I thought they had their. I thought they had their their team. You know. And. Uh, but hey. Yeah, I hey, do. he's known for his deal making, right? I do. I'm sure. I'm sure he was offered a deal. I do like how he's completely ineffective. Like. If okay, so if um, if if Obama would have said like, oh yeah, we're definitely going to have a tremendous war with North Korea, you would have bet they would have loaded every last journalist to seal <laughs> and been like, all right, we're ready, we're gonna. It looks like we're gonna have a war. But when Trump says it, everybody's like, yeah, you say that about everything. <laughs> <laughs> So, you, so are you saying? Wait, are you saying that if the president says something now, it's not reflexively believed? Yeah, like every, nobody believes it anymore. That is new. That is that is new. Good. It's good. I like it. I didn't think that. <laughs> honestly, it. that I didn't think that was possible. I didn't think there's anything they could say that would be just too horrible, too ridiculous, too over the top. Yep. Um, oh, and you know, belated happy loyalty day to you. Oh. Um, <laughs> By the way, uh, speaking of happy thing, uh, not it's not happy. Um, it should, we should we should probably have a, a, a day, a, a fiend remembrance day, because I have been dewormed from the fiends. Uh, I quit. I sent in my resignation. So yeah, you got fired, didn't you? I w- oh, I was definitely fired. Okay, so yeah. you got fired. I was yeah. I resigned. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> so now the lowbirds are, are the official home of the wayward fiends. <laughs> How many other wayward fiends are are have been have been collected? Uh, so far, we have uh, well, Jeremy was was fired and rehired. Uh, M.K. Lords was fired, um, but wasn't she rehired as well? She was rehired and then, then refired or... again. <laughs> okay. Um, who else? Uh, I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? I what love happened? all the yeah. fiends. I do, I do. Yep. I still enjoy the show. I'm not. I'm not bashing him. <laughs> still love the show. In fact, I was before we started. I was listening to the episode with um, the well, the first episode with Bill Bupert and Ben Stone. It's so great. Oh, man. <laughs> it's so great. Y- yeah. yeah, we were talking about how great these guys. I mean, those those were the giants. Those mm-hmm. were the guys that got me interested in the Freedom Fiends. It's like, oh, Ben Stone's on there, and um, and Bill Bupert, who you know. These guys are, they are definite giants to me. So yeah. any show I did with them was a total, total privilege. Yeah. And you should go check out I got out to do his... a show with, uh, with Ben Stone the other day, or with uh, Ernie, doing a podcast. Nice. Derek Slopey. Yeah, Ben Stone, Davi Barker, Ernie Hancock, talking about the uh, Pirates Without Borders project. It's Freaking great! So, so what you got anyway, going yeah. on here is you got you got pirates in in there. You're talking about all sorts of things, and they're setting up decentralized this and decentralized that, trade things, Bitcoin, and blah blah blah. And I'm sitting here like, <laughs> cool, man. <laughs> gonna, people gonna rise up. Gonna <laughs> people rise gonna rise up in the Ron Paul Rev Revolution, and it's gonna be fantastic. And people are not gonna get their vaccines. And I'm sitting here like, okay. <laughs> 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 That is the best. That is the greatest. <laughs> I love. Uh, I love that. I, I love, love Ernie. Though. I love. Him. Yeah. <laughs> even though love I know what he's yeah. gonna say before he even says it. <laughs> oh, I think he's full of surprises. Uh, he uh, is I, on top I, of I love that. It. Yeah. All right, man. So, you have anything you want to plug? <laughs> uh, I got so, nothing. Okay. Got nothing. Nothing yet. Oh, wait a minute. Um, wait a minute. Um, nothing with Ulbrich. Uh, Somalia Fest. Somalia Fest. Pirate Party. Mm. Right, the night before Pork Fest at the Bab Compound. Nice. Any any Lobert, Lobert fan is invited. So this is for for folks that uh, you know, because you know Pork Fest got sh- got shortened yeah. in the schedule due to lack of interest, and the uh, those extra days are filled up with Somalia Fest for nice. people that are really into like just hanging out and you know with our in the you know with our uh, folks, but. Uh, don't really have any interest or in the in the free state project. So this is a project of the of the state free project. Nice Somalia Fest. Yeah. So what I'll do 
is I uh, so everybody I want everybody to hear this too. So what I'm gonna do is I want you to email me your address, and so I'll send you a bunch of Bipstrongs, and anybody who says okay. the Lobert sent you uh, get, gets a free Bipstrong. Sounds right good. on. Sounds yeah. good. All yeah, right, definitely. All right, man. Great having you on again, Bab. It's always great. <laughs> great being here. <laughs> always. Yeah. And I don't care if I'm not on the fiends worms. <laughs> <laughs> worms. <laughs>